Welcome to Netbook Study. This is the daily current affairs analysis of 28 December 2023. In this video, we are going to discuss the important news articles from Hindu newspaper as well as Indian Express newspaper. Along with that, previous year's questions are also going to be discussed. Let's get into the discussion of this. The first news article is regarding PM Uday scheme. Uh, let's see what exactly this particular scheme talks about and also let me give you guys information regarding what has been mentioned in this news article. See, in this news article, it, it talks about yesterday Loks in Lok Sabha one bill has been passed and the name of the bill is National Capital Territory of Delhi Law Special Provision Second Amendment Act. See in 2006 Delhi High Court has given a judgment with respect to unauthorized structure in Delhi region and what exactly these unauthorized structures are these are the government lands but they are occupied by people and they have uh, built their houses and they are staying there then there are around 40 to 50 lakh people they are living in these unauthorized structures so the high court has given a statement high court has uh, uh, sorry so even supreme court has also endorsed this judgment to demolish all these unauthorized structures but government at that point of time it has taken a decision since there are 50 lakh people who are living there so we need to be considered rate so it has given three it has given three years time to those people and also government has also told that within three years we will uh, come to a proper planning with respect to how to handle this issue so in 2006 a law has been passed to keep this issue on hold for uh, three years since then this has been extending three years uh, extension have been given and in 2019 the modi government has taken a decision that we are going to give authorization to these people and the uh, bjp government has announced the scheme the name of the scheme is pm uday that is pradhan mantri unauthorized colonies in delhi avas adhikar yojana government has taken a decision that we are going to give the ownership rights of that particular land and it has been mentioned that around 10 lakh families are going to be get advantage they are going to get benefits out of this particular scheme so this was mentioned in this news article also see even this initiation has taken in 2019 only due to the covid pandemic it was not able to implement at that point of time so now government has extended this provision of uh, delhi special acts where uh, these unauthorized structures are not going to be demolished so three year extension has been given that is till 2026 these unauthorized in, uh, 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 unauthorized colonies they are not going to be destroyed and government has also mentioned that within 2026 pm uday is also going to be implemented so that these people who are living in these unauthorized colonies and unauthorized buildings they are going to get the ownership rights this is what this article talks about and it has been mentioned that it is going to help around 40 lakh people in the delhi region and let's see the previous year question with respect to this topic this is the main question from 2023 does urbanization lead to more segregation or and or marginalization of poor in indian metropolis now this is for uh, 250 words 50 mar 15 marks and let's move to the next topic the next news is regarding cbam what exactly the cbm stands for cbm is a carbon border adjust mechanism see before mentioning what exactly it has been mentioned in this article let me give you guys background information regarding this particular scheme so that it would be easier for you to understand let's talk about this particular scheme carbon border adjustment mechanism actually european union has taken this decision few months ago that they are going for the cbam mechanism and what exactly it is is usually european union they import goods from other country and collectively european union has taken a decision see if you are importing a goods from a country and this imported goods and commodities it, if they are produced by uh, environmentally unfriendly the uh, technologies or non-green technologies then we are going to impose tax on those goods and commodities this is decision has been taken and the tax will be the level of 20 to 35 percent see this is very big tax on any imports see if india is importing uh, in, we are exporting some commodities or some goods to the european union and we are developing that using coal based uh, uh, energy and before that the price was 100 rupees now European Union is going to put 20 rupees extra tax on it so price becomes 120 this is not going to be a consumer it is not going to be attractive to the consumers so the when you compare to other countries import from the same product from other countries they are going to be more competitive so india is going to face that heat it is going to lose the large chunk of uh, economic advantage see the reason it is going to impact india is 
the main import uh, export products from india to european union are iron steel aluminium and even fertilizers and cement these are the important exports from india to european union and all these things are uh, produced no with non green technology only because in india our electricity energy generation is still dependent more than 55% is still dependent on coal only so it is still non green that it is still env environmentally unsustainable way of production of energy so we produce these with the non green technology and when these goods go to european union it is going to attract these taxes 20 to 35% of tax then it is our products are not going to be attractive in the european market so this is going directly going to affect the indian exports so this is the entire mechanism and another aspect is this is going to be implemented from 2026 so this is another aspect see this uh, decision this uh, initiation is taken by european union but in this article it has been mentioned that uh, even uk united kingdom has also taken a decision to implement carbon based at uh, carbon border adjust mechanism see uh, europe has sorry uh, united kingdom britain has came out of the european union two years ago uh, the brexit see this cbam is a cause of concern for india now uk has taken a decision european union has taken a decision now there are another uh, trade association that is european trade free trade uh, eft association that is switzerland iceland uh, norway and Liechtenstein. even these countries are also going to go implement this if usa also go for a cba cbam then it is directly going to impact the indian export and foreign exchange so this is going to be seriously cripple the indian economic uh, capability so india is very much worried with respect to this particular carbon border adjustment mechanism and in text and context page it has been mentioned that if uk implement this particular cbam then it is going to affect almost around 1 billion dollar here it has been mentioned 775 million dollar worth of exports are going to be impacted uh, from india this is what it has been mentioned in the text and context page let's move to the uh, question previous year question with respect to this particular topic question was asked in 2017 uh, broad based tax investment agreement btia is sometimes seen in the news in the context of negotiation held between india and actually this is between european union option a is the right option let's move to the next topic next topic is regarding criminal laws bill even we have discussed this particular topic so many times since it has been mentioned in today's newspaper let me give a brief uh, revision with respect to criminal law bills and here in this news it has been mentioned that see women mps member of parliaments they wanted they were seeking more time to discuss criminal law bills and somewhere they did not uh, get the time to discuss this is what it has been mentioned here but here you, you need to focus on these uh, uh, three bills the three criminal bills actually recently also also we discussed this particular bill and because of the, uh, some of the words used in this particular three bills that has been objected in the parliament so it has been taken back and it has been redrafted like there were the terminologies like mental illness so there was some objection with respect to these kind of terminologies so government took back this bill and it has been reintroduced and the, it, it has taken a decision to the uh, make sure these kind of terminologies have been corrected see mental illness has been replaced by uh, unsound mind these kind of small small grammatical mistakes have been corrected so that since when that came in the news we had a discussion with respect to criminal law bills now again it has come in the newspaper so let me give you guys the information regarding criminal law bills and what are these three criminal law bills see we have a ipc crpc indians Ev evidence act ipc it was established in 1860 it means that this is the british era law that mccallay law at that point of time and indian evidence law was a test uh, was uh, cons uh, passed in 1892 and crpc indian criminal procedure act this was at 1898 see these are all almost 150 years old and india is still following these uh, the british uh, uh, criminal justice system so indian government has taken a decision that we are going to revamp the entire criminal justice system in our country and we are going to enhance and implement it with respect to indian customs so indian penal code it is going to be replaced by bharatiya nyaya sanhita 2023 indian evidence act of 1872 is going to be bharatiya saksha of 2023 indian criminal procedure code is going to be bharatiya nagarika suraksha sanhita of 2023 these these are the revamped criminal justice system of our country and this is going to be passed very soon and let's see the important provision see there are hundreds of amendments have been done with respect to new laws but the thing is some of the 
provisions which are in use which are under the discussion i am going to mention those things and even if the question asks you just have to write six or seven points only these things would be sufficient for the exam perspective also see what are the new provisions with respect to criminal justice system in our country and uh, uh, the important ones are see it is going for uh, any mob lynching kind of activity capital punishment and even the maximum the penalty is the death penalty uh, death uh, penalty this aspect has been uh, accepted and also if a uh, women has been uh, uh, there is a sexual intercourse with women by giving a false promise of marriage then it has been mentioned that 10 years or 10 years of imprisonment is also going to be granted and uh, another important aspect is sedition law sedition the sedition law has been repealed under this uh, new criminal justice system and see we were always had a dilemma with respect to terrorism separatism armed rebellion we did not had a standard definition now government has taken a decision that proper details and proper definitions are going to be uh, given with respect to these kind of issues because if the cases go, go to the court and since there is no clear cut uh, definitions or clear, clear clear cut analysis on this it is going to be trouble for the court of law also to decide so uh, now government has taken a decision that the terrorism separatism rebellion everything is uh, whatever that is going to challenge the sovereignty unity and integrity of india those are uh, defined properly and it, it is going to be implemented in the uh, new criminal law justice system and with respect to terrorism terrorism two aspects have been added here uh, the one is economic perspective and another one is infrastructure perspective under the economic perspective if a person is involved in uh, printing counterfeiter currencies the fake currencies that is also considered as a economic terrorism and from the information infrastructure uh, perspective you see if there are any structures building and uh, these, these structures are if infrastructure uh, the properties if they are used for different pur defense purposes whether it is within india or outside india if this has been damaged even that act has also been considered as a terrorist act see the main issue here is indian embassies were attacked even in outside the india so for that reason in order to counter these particular activities it has been added under the terrorism act act only so these are the main changes that have been implemented under the new bill and another aspect is corruption organized crime all this terrorism even these are all considered under the organized crime only and if you look at the western countries they have a community services solitary confinement these are also considered as a forms of punishment now india is also going through with these kind uh, these forms of punishment under the cr new criminal justice system these are the new made changes and uh, these provisions are under discussion some people are happy with it and some people are ha not happy with it and along with that very recently some of the additional uh, changes have also been made i told you that uh, the change of wordings like mental illness with unsound mind and also another aspect is if a uh, has a uh, women sorry uh, wife's uh, Sorry, mental health of women has also given very much priority here. See, if a husband is harassing a woman or uh, the family members of a husband, if they are ha harassing a woman, then uh, she also have that ability. She has that authority to take action against the relatives of husband also. So, they are also can be included under the crime. This is another aspect. This is under the, the criticism. Uh, it means that you we are seeing a lot of fake dowry cases and if these kind of provisions, if these uh, are given to them, this can be misused this is another counter argument has also been given here and one more interesting uh, uh, addition is that if there is a, a rape case and the pro proceedings are going in a court of law then the media is uh, barred to publish the proceedings or the details of this particular case without the permission so this is another uh, new addition that has been included in the criminal justice system and let's see the previous year question with respect to this particular topic question was asked in 2022 discuss the types of organized crimes describe the linkages between terrorist and organized crime that exist at the national and transnational levels let's move to the next topic next topic uh, the news is regarding places of worship act let's see what exactly it has been mentioned in this article see the ganwa p case it went to the allahabad high court and allahabad high court has given as uh, given sanction to archaeological survey of india to conduct the survey and gi to give the report and both from muslim side and hindu side they uh, they were fighting a case and muslim side they have requested court that see this goes against the places of worship act of 1991 so court should not entertain these kind of uh, request uh, especially with respect to under the place of worship act this is what it has been mentioned but court has given some statement uh, with respect to this statement 
with respect to this petition what court has told is see places of worship act this was passed in 1991 under this act the provision is if there is a mosque it will remain as a mosque if there is a temple it will remain as a temple you cannot change mosque into temple temple into the mosque for that matter any religious uh, constructions and there is a cut off date that 1947 at 1947 in any place if there is a mosque it will remain as a mosque no matter whatever it is historic uh, affiliations are if uh, at 1947 if the place if any uh, building is any or the any construction is considered as a temple it is considered as a temple you cannot change it as a church or you cannot change it as a uh, mosque so this is what it has been mentioned in uh, uh, places of worship act of 1991 but here court has given a uh, statement here it has uh, given an observation under this observation see that is fine whatever that has been mentioned under the worship of uh, place of worship act of 1991 but here in this case it is the land ownership problem it means that uh, the temple authority the trust they are saying that we have the land ownership it means that this land where the mosque is there gyanwapi mosque is there it belongs to temple say so how, how can they their entity exist there so this is what temple is asking now at the same time even mosque community co committee they are telling that we have the land ownership rights with, with us and how can they contest uh, this on the court of law so if you look at the issue there is a tussle for a ownership land ownership in that region so here the main cause is that the place it has a dual ownership here both the temple said they are telling that we have the ownership and the mosque said they are telling that we have the ownership the allahabad high court has told that see they have come to the court to find the religious character of this place so that has to be determined by the trial only we have to conduct, conduct the investigation so that even archaeological department they are going to conduct in, investigation and even the land ownership all these things everything will be a proper investigation is going to happen then we are going to find the religious character of that particular place so this will deter this will be determined by the case so place of worship act is something different and what we are dealing here this is something different this is what court has given an observation with respect to this news article so in a simple summary if i have to tell that the muslim uh, side they went to the uh, they approached the allahabad high court telling that this goes against the place of worship act but high court has given a statement that see we are finding a religious character of a worship place this is this is not this does not goes against the places of worship act of 1991 this is what they have told us so high court has told that it is under the ambit and we are not violating any provisions of places of worship act of 1991 this is it but you, these things it's fine it's just a news article that has been come but you should be aware of places of worship act that is important from exam perspective not exactly what the day to day argument that arguments that are going in the court of law so let me give you guys information regarding places of worship act of 1991 in 1991 a law has been passed by p passed by pv nasim ram government at that time so what was the issue see at the in 1947 uh, august 15 1947 at that at that point of time if there any structure is as a is a mosque at that time or a temple at that time or a church at that time that will remain the same and you cannot contest in a court of law you cannot go to the court that this mosque has been built by temple destroying the temple so it has to be reverted back to the temple so no these kind of petitions are not going going to be entertained by a court of law or even that provision has been removed by the places of worship act of 1991 it says that see any person he cannot convert any place of worship uh, uh, places of worship from one faith to another faith and the cut off date was uh, independence date that is august 15 1947 neither government is going to support these kind of claims nor judiciary is going to support these kind of claims this is the intention behind this particular act of 1991 see the main intention here is see whatever the religious character is at that the, at that point of time after ram janmabhoomi these kind of discussions have increased in our country and there were so many authors they have mentioned that around 96000 temples have been destroyed and they have been converted into mosques so when these kind of data came out people were very furious and they were very aggressive they started filing petitions regarding every structure so if that happens this is going to be uh, extremely difficult even for court to handle and even for the government and even it is going to create some kind of enmity enmity at the social level also so to prohibit all these aspects from the government side from the judiciary side and even at the social level government has taken a decision that we are going for a law so that these kind of petitions are not going to be entertained 
both at the court level and even at legal actions are not going to be taken so this is the law at 1991 but there are two exceptions to it the one exemption exemption is if there are any monuments historical or ancient monuments or any archaeological sites that are not going to be covered under 1991 act and another is even ram janmabhoomi ba babri masjid even this is also kept uh, beyond the ambit of 1991 place of worship act this is the basic information regarding this particular act let's see the previous year question on the particular topic question was asked in 2022 are tolerance assimilation and pluralism key uh, the key elements in making of indian form of secularism justify your answers and let's uh, go to the next topic the next news is regarding lumpy skin disease lumpy skin disease was uh, very much in news last year and this year in the parliament a uh, government has given a data that uh, this 180000 cows have been died the uh, cattle have been died because of the lumpy skin disease this data has been given and uh, uh, somewhere it has been mentioned that the, the data is not correct this is what uh, that has been mentioned in this news article article is not important but the lumpy skin disease since it has been in use it uh, and the discussion has come in the parliament let me give you guys a background information regarding lumpy skin disease see this lumpy skin disease this is a viral disease this is caused by a virus lumpy skin disease virus and it belongs to a genus capripox virus and uh, see there uh, in a virus it, there are two types especially zo zoonotic and non-zoonotic this is non-zoonotic zoonotic is if a virus transmits from animals to human then they are considered as zoonotic diseases and non-zoonotic diseases are that it won't transfer and this lumpy skin disease it won't transfer to human being and if a cattle if an animal is affected by lumpy skin diseases what exactly it happens see it creates a small kind of lumps on the skin i'll show you in the pic as you see small uh, kind of lumps you can see these kind of lumps will be created on the entire body see the it directly affect the lymph nodes lymph nodes are affected it means that your immunity has been decreased it, it has been compromised and the feature of this lumpy skin, lumpy skin disease is the the kind of lumps that are, that are going to appear on the skin and other symptoms will be high uh, fever and th there will be a the nosal and a sec nosal secretion salivation loss of appetite and another important aspect is there will be a drop in the milk secretion and even the fertility is also going to be fertility of cattle is also going to be affected and even deaths are also been uh, noticed these are the primary symptoms and let's see the transmission how these particular diseases are transmitted the one thing is you due to the flies and mus uh, mosquitoes the blood feeding insects another is direct to direct co contact and the third way is to cross contamination by movement of affected animals or the contaminated uh, equipment that has been used on the animal which is uh, infected and if the same equipment is used to another animal which is not infected then the cross contamination is also going to happen and let's see the treatment also see there is no direct antiviral treatment everything is a symptomatic treatment so you have to treat the uh, symptoms only so it involves antibiotics painkillers and wound care sprays usually treatment of symptoms is going to happen see from economic wise this place this is going to damage the village economy because it is directly affect the milk production and also it is cause the temporary or permanent sterility in bulls so this is going to directly affect the cattle population even the death has also been reported so even in this uh, news article it has been mentioned that around 1 lakh cattle have been died due to this uh, lumpy skin diseases so it is going to uh, create some kind of issue with the village economy so this is it regarding this particular news let's see the previous year question with respect to this topic question was asked in 2017 uh, for there are two statements have been given you have to find which among these two statements are correct in tropical regions zika virus disease is transmitted by same mosquito that transmit dengue actually this is right aedes aegypti and the sexual transmit of zika virus disease is possible this is also right option c is the right option let's move to the final article uh, the final news is alternative investment fund and uh, what exactly has been mentioned let's see first in this news article see uh, these alternative investment funds these are like private high net individual they put their funds see i have 100 crores another person has 100 crores we all put and we make it as a 500 crores and this 500 crores will be given to the whether it is new starts up or for any uh, uh, investment we make it so and we get money out of it so what was happening is even the banks 
and the non banking financial institution nbfcs even these were these were also funding alternative investment fund and rbi has told that rbi has expressed its concern especially with respect to banks and nbfcs which are investing in alternative investment fund see the reason is uh, many a times uh, there al these alternative invest fund it gives some money to some company a company a it has given this money to it this company is not making any profit but Uh, this uh, AI, these alternative investment funds, they are keep giving money to this company. See, even they know that they are not making any profit, but still money has been pumped into it. So this is very wrong way of approaching. There might be any vested interest as well. But the thing is, you uh, this is already a stressed asset. It means that you are not getting anything back, and the company is also in the under the stress. And still on top of it. these funds are going again to the same company only and when banks and nbfcs are involved with those kind of alternative investment fund this is going to create trouble bank fund and nbf it means that these are the people money so people money are going to stuck with alternative investment fund it means that it is stuck with this loss making company this stress asset so rbi has given instruction it has given a warning and it is also taking steps to tighten the norms for alternative investment fund investments so this is what it has been mentioned in this article but let me give you guys background information regarding alternative investment fund also and this is important from exam perspective and let's see what exactly these are aifs are as i told you aifs are privately pooled investment there are things that there are four uh, private individual whether may be indian or foreign individual foreign citizen they can pool their money they created a money of 500 crores and this money can be used to invest somewhere and another aspect is even this alt uh, alternative investment fund this is this also should follow the rules and regulations of sebi see for angel tax we don't have this much of regulations for artificial uh, alternative investment fund even they have to follow the sebi regulations 2012 and this alternative investment fund they can call it as a trust and they can call it as a limited liability partnership and even they can call it as a company it is up to them all the freedom has been given to it and another noticeable aspect here is there are three categories of alternative investment fund in the first category what it does is they invest at that startup see they got to know that these companies have a potential in future and if we invest 100 crores and we are going to make 500 crores or 1000 crores in future after 5 years 6 years maybe after 10 years so initial the category one alternative funds uh, aifs usually invest on the startup these are the category one and category two they are usually uh, these uh, companies or organization they take money from aif for day to day operational requirements they want money for uh, some operational or manager real aspect for that they take money and they give back and usually if you look at it what are these fund these are debt funds private equity funds and funds for distressed assets and their third category third category usually what happens they pool money the alternative investment and these funds will be added uh, will be used for a trading strategies especially in the stock market investments for these kind of activities this third category aifs are used so these are three primary category even in the picture here i have put here even it has been mentioned here there are three categories category 1 category 2 and category 3 and name of the fund is also there here infrastructure fund venture capital fund angel fund social venture fund these are considered as a category one usually they invest on a startup or those companies they think that in future it has potential to generate money so category one is a very strong aspect of investment it means that it is a futuristic category two are private equity fund real estate fund debt fund fund of funds usually for day to day company all, already been established but they need fund they want to open an, another branch so they need money or they want some urgent necessity is there so they want some money for that activity these uh, afs are going to help and that category those funds are mentioned here category 2 and in category 3 these are the hedge funds if you want to do some trading in derivatives if you want to do uh, some uh, buying of some stocks or manipulation all these things that will be done with the help of category 3 alternative funds so these are the primarily three types of fund and in this article the rbi is skeptical of banks investing in these uh, aifs and especially loss making af especially afs which are at risk so it it is going to make some uh, strict norms with respect to investment in 
artificial sorry alternative investment fund see i'm getting again artificial artificial since i've done so many article with respect to artificial intelligence i get the same thing and let's see the previous uh, year question with respect to this particular topic the question was asked in 2014 and the question is what does venture capital mean the answer is uh, b actually it's a long term startup capital provided to a new entrepreneurs this is aif see these these years especially from 2 uh, 3 years if you look at the economic questions they are getting very uh, difficult to answer it and these are not very simple economic concepts they are getting very in, into advanced section of it and these kind of uh, simple questions like what does venture capital mean these kind of questions are very less you cannot expect expect these kind of questions in economic sections so economy has become very important hot topic and uh, the, even the level of difficulty has increased with respect to economy other subjects yes somewhere it is on the same levels but economy aspects it is very tough now and option is uh, b as i told you and uh, this pdf is available in network study a uh, telegram channel uh, you can download this pdf and uh, please like the video subscribe to the channel i'll see you guys tomorrow with current affairs have a good time